a grateful Christian in recovery from drugs and alcohol and bulimia, and I'm really glad to be here tonight because I really need to be here tonight. Anybody else? I'm just saying. Um, I'm going to speak briefly tonight. I have a couple of friends that are going to help me out um, during the lesson tonight, and we're going to be teaching and, and sharing on principle eight and step 12. Would you go ahead, I know you did it already, but will you read principle eight with me again? Yield myself to God to be used to bring this good news to others, both by my example and by my words. And step 12, having had a spiritual experience as a result of these steps, we tried to carry this message to others and to practice these principles in all our affairs. So what I decided tonight, instead of trying to explain to you what it means to be used to bring this good news to others, I was going to invite a couple people toward the end of, uh, of the lesson tonight to bring the good news towards others. See how, I, see how I'm doing that? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're going to actually bring the good news tonight, so watch and learn. Okay, now I don't know if you were alive Every time I, I do a lesson and I talk about, um, talk about stuff and have to preface it with, I don't know if you were alive, it makes me feel extremely old. It, I'm just telling you. Um, so I don't know if you were alive when uh, Gerald Ford was president. Anybody, was anybody alive then? All right. Woo. Okay. So, so when Gerald Ford was president, his wife, Betty, uh, was an addict. She, she was an active addict. She was addicted to pills. And, um, and so um, she went through treatment for addiction to pills. So here's the president. It was pretty interesting times. The president of the United States' wife is in treatment on one side. And on the other side, the Beastie Boys came out with what I considered the anthem of the 80s. And if you know what I'm going to say, say it with me. You got to fight for your right to party. Yeah, so Betty took her right seriously, okay? But she hit bottom, and she got sober, and she decided to get heavily involved in what the government at that time was calling the war on drugs. And, and one day, a young girl asked Mrs. Ford what she should do if one of her friends came up and invited her to smoke marijuana with them. Does anybody remember what Betty Ford said? It was a three-word sentence, and it was the banner cry, just say no. You guys are so much smarter than you look. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. You still love me, right? So um, this, this be did become the banner cry for this generation of people who really thought that they were going to end drug addiction. In, in their era, and, and, and just say no. I wish it were that simple, don't you? I really wish it were that simple because, because it's easier to say yes. I mean, without any thought whatsoever, I, I thought it was easy to say yes to drinking and, and, and getting high with any thought of, of what the results of my choices might be, and I should probably use the word consequences. I didn't think about it at all. I said, yes, 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 yes to everything. And I didn't realize it at the time. I, I was making a choice every day, and, and I still have that choice every day, to fight for my right to party or just say no. I have that choice still today, and so do you. And we need to be able, friends, to think our choices through. That's, that's something new that we learn when we come into recovery. And, and I think this is an important time to talk about this. Now, I know that we've been taught to live one day at a time and one moment at a time, but, but it will do us all a little bit of good to think ahead while we are continuing in the month of December. Uh, I, I had an unfortunate conversation with somebody today who has relapsed, who had time in, who couldn't take the pressure. It's party month. 
right? Office parties, uh, family parties, New Year's Eve parties, we are going to have temptation. Some of us are going to have temptation this month. Even, even when we're going to meetings, even when we're working our program, even when we're checking in with our sponsor, we're going to have temptation. And there may be some temptation come your way that you need to think through. Now, there's a sign in the AA rooms. I, I love AA I still go to, to meetings. I, I, I love the AA program. Anybody else? Yeah, I, yeah it's, it's really good, good stuff. Well, there's a sign on the wall of the AA rooms, and it says, think, think, think. Well, don't we always think we know what's best for us? Always? Um, has it always been true? No, no. But that's nothing new. There's a proverb uh, it's Proverbs 14, 12, and it says, there is a way that appears to be right, but in the end it leads to death. See, I thought it, it seemed right to drink. I mean, all my friends were doing it. Everybody was doing it. It seemed right to drug. It, it made me feel better. It made me uh, uh, feel pretty, and, and I could dance. I probably looked like Elaine on Seinfeld when I danced, but I thought I was rocking, okay? Um, but, but drinking and drugging were leading me to death. And, and, and here's the thing. This is your, your first write-me-down. It was easy to say yes to drugs and alcohol, but the result was death. It was easy to say yes, but the result was death. See, when I said the easy yes to drugs and alcohol, my best thinking, my best plan for living was an $84 a month HUD apartment and me stealing and scheming and lying and literally doing whatever I had to do to stay drunk or high. And, and, and I suffered through many deaths, death of a marriage, death of, of my most important relationships. I, I got disowned by my family, death of, of, of my dreams. I, I lost my scholarship. It, it was just a series of one death after another, and, and I was spiraling down so far that, that, that my physical death was coming. It, it, was, it was coming because I wanted to die. That's where drugs and alcohol took me, and I lost everything and everybody that ever meant anything to me, and I ultimately ended up homeless twice. But I didn't think my problems were related to alcohol, okay? There is, um, there is this scripture that describes me perfectly, and it may describe you too, and I didn't even know this was in the Bible. When I first read this, I was floored because I found out that I am in the Bible. There's a whole section about me, and, and I, it's true, and it's, 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 it's amazing. So, so listen to this and keep this in mind. This was written 3,000 years ago. See if this describes anything like your life. Whose heart, gosh, it still gets me. Whose heart is filled with anguish and sorrow? Who's always fighting and quarreling? Who's the person with the bloodshot eyes and the many wounds? Listen to this. 3,000 years ago, God put this in the Bible. It's the one who spends long hours in the taverns trying out new mixtures. Don't let the sparkle and the smooth taste of strong wine deceive you, for in the end, it bites like a poisonous serpent. It stings like an adder. You will see hallucinations and have delirium tremens, and you will say foolish, silly things that would embarrass you no end when sober. Does this sound familiar? It's nothing new. You will stagger like a sailor, tossed at sea, clinging to a swaying mast. Can you just see a great big tall mast and you just hanging on to it for dear life, right? You ever had one of those nights? And afterwards, you'll say, I didn't even know it when they beat me up. 
let's go have another drink. You think God knows who we are? So when I got into recovery, let's just say um, my thinking was not healthy. And my sponsor said, your thinking is wrong. And I asked her how much of my thinking was wrong. And she said, we'll start with all of it. And if there's any, any good, we'll let you know. <laughs> and I said to her, you got a sign up there that says, think, think, think. And she said, that's for us. <laughs> okay. It sounds funny now, but I did need to learn new ways to think. I had to change the things I could. And it started saying yes to new things. Now I needed to say yes to new things. Now here's your second fill in the blank. It was hard to say yes to recovery, but the results are life. So it was easy to say yes to drugs and alcohol and the result was death. It was hard. We don't come here because it's going well. It's, it, it gets hard, doesn't it? It's just hard. And it was hard to, to, to make the decision to finally make a change in my life and I had no idea what I was getting into. And here's the thing. I'm not selling you some recovery experience that's sugar-coated. It's not, hey, if you put the plug in the jug, man, it's going to be awesome from here on out. Everything's going to be okay. It's just not that way. Putting the plug in the jug is a great start. Getting sober is much more, though, than just say no. It is say yes. Instead of saying no to, to drugs and alcohol and porn or control or whatever recovery issue you come here, you can say no, 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 no all you want and be miserable. Miserable. Or you can begin to say yes, yes, yes to new things. It's saying yes, yes, yes. Yes to meetings, yes to sponsorship, yes to the steps. It's saying yes even when you don't feel like it. It's, it's about getting your backside to a meeting when you've had a long day, okay? I, I, I just heard Arlene, Pastor Arlene go, yes. <laughs> Pastor, I'm going to tell Pastor Arlene and I got up at 3 o'clock this morning in Knoxville, Tennessee, and traveled through four states so we could be here tonight. We have had a little caffeine, but we're here, okay? See, how, how I feel about getting myself to a meeting doesn't really matter. Going to the meeting matters. How I feel about working the steps, whether I understand or whether I can, I can project the outcome of what is going to happen when I take that step doesn't matter. Doing the steps matters. Saying yes, saying yes, this is the best way to counter old thinking which constantly, constantly tries to creep in. doesn't matter how many days, months, or years you have in recovery. It's something that we have to do all the time. Old ways, we're, we're kind of bent in old ways. And, and I want to say again, there is a way that seems right, that appears to be right, but in the end, it leads to death. See, it seems right that because I've detoxed and I haven't had any drugs or alcohol for a few 24 hours that I should be able to do this on my own. That seems right to me. It seems right to me that I don't confess my sins to another person because I don't want anybody knowing my junk. That just seems right to me. It seems right that I don't put myself out there to make amends. What if they don't accept my apology? What if they're mean to me? It seems right that I wouldn't subject myself to that. It seems right 
that after a long day, I would go home and turn on Netflix instead of coming to a meeting. These things seem to be right, but will they lead to life? That's always the question. I have a couple of friends that are going to come up and share, so I want to make sure this mic is turned on. So, uh, Scott, turn on the mic and come on. Oh, there you are. Come on up. Come on up. Would you do me a favor and welcome Leslie and Scott? This one is Scott. That's Leslie. Okay. So... So I'm going to, yeah, it is bright up here. You, come on, you can stand up here because we need to see you. So I want to, I wanna, um, first of all, I want to thank you both for agreeing to, um, to do the 12th step. Having had a spiritual experience as a result of these steps, we try to practice these principles in all our affairs, and we're going to share the good news with other people. So um, this is them doing that. Isn't that awesome? So what I want to ask both of you is, let's say within the last year, have you had to make a hard decision that led to life? Leslie, have you had to make one of those? Yes, I have. Uh, well, how about sharing it with us? <laughs> <laughs> My name's Leslie. I am an alcoholic in recovery. Hey, Leslie. Thank you. <laughs> along with procrastination. <laughs> um, the hard yes. Um, I had um, been coming here to celebrate recovery, and I did the 12 steps here on Tuesday nights, met some really good friends that I've seen this evening, which has been great. And then they started recovery in the shores, so I went there and stop coming over here. But when that closed down, I don't think I consciously said, I've got this, Lord, you don't have to worry about me. But I didn't come back here. I didn't go anywhere. I stayed where I was. And I think, little by little, I began to lose the incentive to the accountability to keep doing the inventory and things like that. And then I got into a huge big argument in public with one of my friends. It was bad. It was really bad. And if that wasn't enough, the same thing happened again about three days later. And then finally, on Sunday in the fellowship hall, I had another one of these episodes, shall we call them. <laughs> and um, I realized I needed to do something. It never occurred to me that it had anything to do with alcohol because I wasn't drinking. I wasn't drinking at all. Right. And so it couldn't be that. It had to be um, my husband or... You can think of anybody. It, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. Then Sherry said to me, well, have you thought about going to AA? Well, I, I once went to Al-Anon when I didn't have a problem, but my children had a problem. <laughs> and in Al-Anon, I met this lady who her higher power was a tree. I had a hard time with that. And she had a hard time with my higher power being Jesus. <laughs> and in fact, she had such a hard time with it that they finally kicked me out. I couldn't use the word Jesus. I could use my higher power, but not Jesus. So I left. And so I didn't want to go to AA. It was going to be the same thing. People worshipping trees. No, thank you. <laughs> but she did ask again. And again. And again. And again. She finally <laughs> asked me to go to her group. She told me how great it was. And I'm thinking, go to an AA meeting where my pastor is? <laughs> no. That's like going to 
an AA meeting with your daughter. You know, you know who does that? Maybe you do. Um, so anyway, um, finally, I got worn down. And I made that hard yes, because it was hard. I would go on Saturday evening to the AA meeting we have at the Shores. And it, to walk in to that room with all these preconceived ideas about what it was going to be like, it was hard. But I am so glad I did it. Amen. I am so glad. I met people who understood me who knew about me. They knew about me because they were like me. And they were wonderful, charming people. Aren't all alcoholics charming? Yes. We are adorable. <laughs> we are. Let's say thank you to Leslie. Thank you. Thank you. So that was a hard yes that led to life and new life inside you, didn't it? Yeah. Okay. Scott, my friend, have you had to say a hard yes this year? Yeah, a hard yes, and hard no's. Um, I'm Scott, I'm Christian Recovery. Uh, been coming around um, 11 years, mm -hmm. and uh, I have lost it all, and God has given it all back. And uh, it's been an amazing journey. And uh, this past year, something that I didn't personally see coming, I've been navigating through divorce. And um, when, it, when it came about, when it came to be known that this was the next season of my life, I had to say no to um, running from hurt, fear, and pain. And... Uh, and say yes to accountability and recovery and prayer. Um, I'll tell you one thing, if, if I had chosen to run, it wouldn't have been running from hurt of others, it would have been running from fear that I was hurt myself and caused these, these things. Because as an addict, I tend to believe that I really do deserve anything bad that would come my way. Um, but God, this year, has spoken to my heart through his church and the community of Jesus and Christ followers through people like Sherry and other pastors here and friends. And um, I uh, had to take, a, take some classes and just learn how to sit and be still. Yeah and say no to things that in the end would, I could put in my body that would enhance chemical production in my brain that would make me what, believe that uh, everything is okay for a few hours. Well, I've been there and I've done that and it's all crap. <laughs> Amen to that. Nothing, Amen. It doesn't. So um, this year, God has shown me something I didn't know that he did I believe that when I asked Christ into my heart um, 10, 11 years ago, um, he gave me a new heart. And he has been for 10 years kickstarting this thing <laughs> with people that have received his love and poured it into me. And so that. I somehow found myself in a place with recovery that when the storm came, I stood. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Scott. Yes, yes, yeah. Scott said, that people poured into him. People were working the 12th step, sharing their experience, strength, and hope, and encouraging Scott, who has now shared his experience, strength, and hope with you. See how that works? See how it works when, when Leslie admits freely, I thought I had it all together. I was sober. 
And then I found out at, at four years of sobriety, I needed to go to AA. <laughs> Sharing that experience, strength, and hope. Do you feel encouraged tonight? Amen. Amen. All right, let's give him a hand. Thank you, guys. So um, I want to call the band up. When I was a substance abuse counselor, I was a substance abuse counselor for years, and, um, and I used to tell people when they would come and see me, I don't want to see you. I don't want to have a relationship with you where you come and see me for a year or two years, and every time, every time you, um, you come, I have to, to pump you up. You know what I'm saying? That, nobody wants that. I, wanna, I want people to be their own encourager, have a sponsor, have accountability, but, but take some responsibility for, for encouraging yourself. Does that make sense? Okay. So, so I want to ask you to be your own encourager, and I want to ask you a couple questions. Whether you want to go to a meeting or not, are you going to go to a meeting? Yes. I don't, I'm not convinced. Whether you want to be transparent with your sponsor and accountability partners, whether you want to or not, are you going to do it? Yeah. Right. Whether the steps make sense to you or not, are you going to do them? Yeah. Okay. So here's, here's what I think. I think in your heart, I think in every single heart in this room, there's this thing that God's calling you to say yes to. I really do. Whether it's steps or sponsorship or, or to make that phone call or to, to step out and share your story with your neighbor who, who is sleeping on the lawn two nights a week. Whatever that thing is that you need to say yes to. See, what you're doing when you say yes to those things, you think you're saying yes to this thing, but what you're saying yes to is sobriety and hope and encouragement and sanity and, and a future and purpose in your life. When, when everything inside you screams no, you've got to scream louder yes. I'm going to say that, and then I want you to respond. When everything in you says no, you've got to say louder yes, yes, yes to you, yes to sobriety, to meetings, to God, yes to Jesus, yes to Jesus. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. I want to invite you to say yes to something. I'm going to tell you, I got home and I wanted to say yes to my Sealy Posturepedic. <laughs> but it was so much more important to be here tonight. There's something we all need to say yes to. And while the band's playing, if you want to come up and confess it to somebody, this is what I'm going to say yes to. This is what I know. I've been putting off. I've been procrastinating. This is what God's been stirring in my heart. This is, a, this is what I know is going to bring my breakthrough. I, I need to say yes. I need to say yes, and I need to follow through. Come. Tell somebody. Tell the person kneeling beside you. Tell somebody up at the altar when the people come up to pray with you. Tell Pastor Arlene. Tell your accountability partner. Say yes to you. Say yes to your sobriety, to your recovery. Just say, just say yes. Amen? Amen. Please come forward. Say yes.